Hi, today we're talking about drum programming, which is the art of producing drum tracks electronically using drum machines or your DAW. Now there's a ton of different tools for doing this. And if you look around my studio, you'll see I'm kind of obsessed with trying all of them. But today I'm gonna to break down a few approaches for creating drum tracks in your DAW and how to combine them to create engaging and interesting beats. So I've started working on an idea here in Pro Tools. I've got a couple of loops, I've added a synth bass line, and I've dropped in some vocal samples that I grabbed from Loop Cloud just to get a vibe going. Now I wanna add some drums. So I'm gonna add a new track, and I want a track preset that uses a drum machine plugin, and I'm gonna use Groove Cell. Okay, so that's my new track. I'll drop it at the top, and you'll see it's got the Groove Cell plugin in there. So the plugin loads up with some default sounds. 909 hits, which I can trigger from my mouse or from my MIDI controller. But I want to load up my own sounds. And I've got an idea for this track as a kind of chill, tropical house type beat. So I have a kit in mind from the factory flat pack suite, which is called Dancehall New Style. So it's got a mixture of some kind of traditional housey sounds, but some nice acoustic percussion as well. So we can look at some different ways of working. And I'm gonna look at four different ways. Step sequencing, MIDI sequencing, live recording, and then working with audio one shots. So drum machine plugins often have a built-in step sequencer like this one in Groove Cell. And what these let you do is create patterns and trigger sounds without using the MIDI tracks in your DAW. So I'm gonna play this pattern. You can see that the drum kit has loaded up with a stored pattern. Sounds like this. And you can see this is like a play position that steps through this grid. And each of these columns is a step in time. And by default, they're a 16th note, which means that 16 steps makes up one bar. And we've got two bars shown in the grid. The rows going down are the individual lanes for each sound. In fact, I can audition them here. So by adding these little squares, I can choose when in time each drum sound is gonna trigger. So first thing I'm gonna do is clear out this pattern because we wanna make our own. I'll just zero the parameters here. When I hit play in Pro Tools, the sequencer is going to sync up automatically. And I can start adding steps. So I wanna start with your classic four on the floor kick. I'm gonna use this one rather than the main kick because it's got a nice subby click to it. And there you go. And I'm gonna add a couple of other, see if we can find a nice bass tone. I'm just gonna drop those in, which always helps just to make that main beat a little bit more interesting. So again, sticking with the kind of house formula, let's go with some kind of hi-hat on the off beats. That's these ones in between the main beats. There you go. And then I guess the, the next obvious step will be to add a snare or a clap or something on the back beats. That's the two and the four in each bar. Got a snare. Let's go with the clap. All right, and then I want to add another hat, some other sound to just drive things on a bit. We're going to use this one. So I'm just going to almost randomly drop some of these in. Just want quite a few of these. And these are gonna be important in a moment. But you can see with step sequencing, you can build patterns pretty quickly. Uh, you can experiment and find ideas that you might not find if you were playing live. On the downside, everything is on the grid. So it, the timing is very rigid. And so it might lack some of the feel or kind of human element that you'd get from a live drum track. But we can do some things about that. The first thing I can do is take this hi-hat and add some variation in levels. And we do that by adjusting the velocity lane here. Velocity is just how hard each trigger gets hit. So by changing some of these up, we add some dynamics, which is variation in hardness. And the other thing I can do is add some variation in timing. To do that, we use the swing control. 
listen what happens when I dial this up. What you probably notice is you start to nod your head because there's this shuffle feel that's been introduced, which basically means those hats, the second one of each of those hats on the grid is getting played later and later and gives it this groove. Okay, one last thing I want to show you on this pattern is this clap, you might have noticed, sounds quite relaxed. This is another timing trick. Saved in this kit, in that lane, is a nudge factor on this clip, which means that it plays slightly late. Let me turn this right up and you'll hear what I mean. That's really late. If I bring it back down to zero, it starts to sound quite rigid. But as soon as we push it back, it gets this laid back feel. So that's step sequencing. Now let's have a look at MIDI sequencing. So I could have created all of these triggers directly in my instrument track as MIDI notes. And rather than go back and show you that from scratch, let's take what we've got and then build from there. So I'll export this pattern as MIDI, which means I can drop it into my track and it becomes a MIDI clip. I can then switch off the sequencer in Groove Cell, and now my track is playing back these sounds. As you can hear when we get to the end of the loop. So let's duplicate this loop up and I'll move Groove Cell out of the way. So I could work directly into this track here. I can switch my view to notes and I can draw things in, but it's a lot easier to work in the MIDI editor. Now in the MIDI editor, we're looking at the same information as we did in the step sequencer, but it's using a piano roll view and MIDI notes. I can still audition sounds and I can double click to add notes and I can double click to remove notes and do that. I can also use the pencil tool to very quickly add notes or delete them with Alt. And I'm a little bit more flexible in here, although it's very neat and easy to work in the step sequence. So I can do more things in the piano roll, such as selecting multiple notes at once. Um, I can also edit the velocity down here, similar to how I did in the step sequencer. So let's add some of those. So we've added these two snares. I can just move them to where I want them, just as small fills. So that's MIDI sequencing. Now let's have a look at approach number three, which is MIDI recording. So as well as adding notes into the clips like this using the mouse, I can record directly in. And I could have done that completely from the beginning into an empty track, or again, I can add to what we have. So let's record on this track. And now I can play directly in from my MIDI controller. What I'll do is I'll reduce my play range just to this one clip. And I want to add a kind of clave rhythm using this sound. Okay, and when I'm happy, I can just go into record by pressing F12. Okay, and I don't like the way this snare is working, so let's just delete that. So you can see the notes that I recorded here. If I'm not happy, I could re-record that, or I could do some editing. And I can see that the notes are late. They're not on the grid. And that's partly because that's the feel of this pattern. And I may just not have played it very well. So we could tighten that up. Um, I could use some manual editing. And in fact, this note here is just in the wrong place. So let's just move that. And that snapped it to the grid. Now for the rest, let's use the quantize function. Pro Tools, which is this Q button here. If I select this whole range of notes, I can come up here and I can apply 100% strength quantize, which as you'll see, will put everything directly on the grid. 
Now to me that's lost something. It's now just a bit too rigid. So how about we try something like half quantize? So I'll undo that and we'll bring the quantize strength down to somewhere around 50% and do it again. And now it's just moving the clips a little bit more in time, but not completely. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's record something else. This time I'm going to select a bigger play range so that we can record across multiple clips. And this is really handy for adding fills and variation after you've already created arrangements from your patterns. Okay, so let's try something with this metal percussion. Okay, I'm going to stop. I've got a two bar count off here. I'm going to hit F12 to record. Okay, so this has left me with four slightly different clips. And again, I can quantize this. If I select that note, it's gonna select it across all the clips. You can see if I select them all, see all of them. So again, I could do a similar thing with a quantize. Another option I have is to do a full strength quantize, but use swing. Um, the same as we did in the sequencer when we added that swing dial. Drum programming technique number four is audio sequencing, using one-shot samples in audio tracks. So, so far we've been using a drum machine plugin and triggering it via MIDI or from a step sequencer. But you can actually just take audio clips, and drop them into your timeline and create drum tracks that way. So let's have a look. I'm gonna open my sound base where I've got all my samples and let's find some one-shot samples. Let's try snares. Maybe this one. So if I want to use this snare in my track, I can literally just drag it in. So I'm going to drag it into the track list. It's going to create a new track and drop it in. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to change my grid to 16th notes. So now I can use the timeline like a sequencer. And I'm going to match. I can see where the snares are on my MIDI clip. So I can work like this. And if I like that particular sound, I can actually group them to a single clip, which makes it easier for me to arrange. Some people like to use this method to build their drum tracks from scratch. I like to use it to add to stuff that's already there and it's really good at adding fills and transitions. So let's do that. Let's create a transition. I'm going to open my workspace again and let's come into the symbols and we'll build a classic reverse symbol transition. That's perfect. So again, I'll drop that into the track list. So I could use this sound to create a transition. Okay, let's take a copy of this sample and I'll use Audio Suite Reverse to spin it around. Okay. And then I'm going to say Snap to Next, which is going to butt it up there. And let's listen. The final thing to talk about is arrangement where we come to create a song structure using the elements that we've been working with. We don't want the same pattern to just loop all the way through the song because it'll be boring. You need some variations, different patterns that work with different parts of the song. So you might have a build up in the intro, verse and chorus, you might have a breakdown section and a drop. And we've already been looking at some ways of creating some different variations. We've recorded different parts over different clips. We've added some audio samples and some transitions. 
Another thing you could do is work in the Groove Cell Sequencer and drop in different patterns at different places. I'm going to show you a quick way of working in the timeline um, to quickly flesh out a song structure. Let's take everything that we've been working on so far and just move it up a few bars so we can start creating an intro. So for the beginning, we might have our chords. And let's bring our main pattern in here. What I'm going to do is just start taking some things out to create a build. So let's open the MIDI editor. And I'm going to delete everything except for Delete that one as well. And I'm going to duplicate that. In fact, in the first one, let's break it down even more. Take out this one. So we get some progression here. Got extra one there we don't need. Okay, let's now bring in another copy of these clips. We'll duplicate piano and bring the pad in. And again, we'll simplify what we've got. And then maybe we'll take one more version. The same, but we'll leave the clap in this time. Let's take the clubby rhythm out. And we can keep working like this, creating appropriate patterns for different parts of the song. So I hope that's given you some ideas for programming drums in your own tracks. Be sure to check out our other videos on beat making and music production. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.